ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Field Runners 2. I apologize if I sound a little bit tired or a little bit dozy, but it's like not even 7am in the morning yet and I'm somehow up and out of my bed and actually doing this video, so yeah, if I sound just a little bit tired, yeah, that's probably why. But anyway, let's just go have a quick look around, so... You can turn on the grid. I recommend setting this to always so you can see what you can always see where you can put down some towers and you've also got music and sounds. We won't bother changing those, they'll find the way they are. We'll just hop right into the game, shall we? So this is our world map. Fireworks going on in the background there for some reason. But nevertheless, we have a linear set of stages. There are a couple of ones that pop up pop up to the side every now and again, but other than that, it's pretty linear. We have local and global scores for pretty much every stage in the game. I'm currently number 11 in the world, which is quite nice. I don't actually recognize anyone else on this list, but having someone who managed to get the name Amiga 500 being number 8 is actually very satisfying. You have decks of cars that give you specific rewards if you get all of them, but it doesn't really seem like much. Like, collect the grunt deck for a thousand coins. Yes, we'll get into that, but there are a bunch of different decks. And you have to collect all of these in order to get the entirety of the trophy set. And if we just go and have a look over here... Beat every level in 24 hours on Heroic, no restarting, failing, or quitting. Ha ha, good fucking luck. Jesus Christ, you have no idea how hard that is. You've got the news feed over here, which really doesn't tell you much. Over here in the bottom left, we have pages that tell you about all the units, towers, and items that you've found so far. Nothing too major. You've got your stars in the top right, you've got your coins in your top left. Now, the other thing about coins is that you can't actually buy them, and that turns into a bit of an issue. But we'll get into that. So, every one of these banners here is a unique level, so if we tap on one... You can see it's a heart level, which is a survival level, and it's got three different difficulties. This one is a sudden death level. This one is a time uh, time trial level. We're going to play one of the time trial levels and one of the sudden death levels. Then we're going to move on to another level type. Because these levels are the shorter ones, and the normal levels can actually go on for a fairly long time. So we'll just pop into casual here. Now, one of the biggest problems with this game is that the coin values on some of these towers are absolutely atrocious. Like, this one here. I need to get 2,000 coins. I have 301 coins. And I have literally spent no coins since the start of the game. The towers in this game are stupidly grindy. And you see that little plus mark there? That would imply that you could buy some coins if you really, really wanted to. Nope! Turns out you can't. That piece of art is there for no bloody reason, and I have no idea why. And look at all of this! Look at all of these towers that you need to buy. It's bloody ridiculous. The amount of grinding you would need to do to unlock all this crap. I've managed to get, like, one star on every level, but I mean, good lord, with the towers that I have right now, it is really, really goddamn hard to three-star anything. So, we'll just move on. We also have disposable items! And look at how much it costs to buy a Blaze Smart Mine. 30 coins. It costs... You get like 10 coins per level on a casual level. And slightly more if you up the difficulty. It's kind of insane. You don't want to go actually using those coins because it costs a lot of money and you'll end up using the profit you get from one level from three levels on one smart mine. It's kind of ridiculous. But we'll just play on this. Okay, so this is a sudden death level. Even though it's not really sudden death, you get three You get you get three you get the ability to let three guys through before the level ends. So this game's controlled entirely by the touchscreen. There's no button controls whatsoever. I actually would have liked to have seen button controls because this interface can get fairly difficult to use at times. Especially if, like, you zoomed in on something and if I want to try and interact with this tower, I'll plant another tower down by accident. Perfect demonstration of why that's a problem. So the idea of this game is that you put down towers in the squares, obviously, and... 
the clever thing about this game, or at least in some of the levels, not all of them, and by not all of them, I mean a fairly small fraction of them, is that these troopers can actually take a fair set of patterns, but only when the level designs allow it. They can go on a lot of different paths, but only when the... Oh dear, we're about to lose, but... They can go on a fair few different types of paths when the game allows them to. I wasn't really paying attention there, that's why I lost. They can go on a fair few different types of paths, but the level designs often don't allow them to. They're usually forced onto one line, which is a really depressing thing. There are really clever levels, and I will be showing one off when we get to it. That lets you build a maze for the troopers to move through. Or the field runners, as the game calls them. But sometimes it just doesn't let you do that. Sometimes they just, in a lot of cases, they, they force you onto one path. Like, did not mean to tap that. This interface is a bit annoying. So yeah, that one's fine, because it's an open level and you can send it through however you, however you want. This one has two different levels, um, two different paths, and this one also has two different paths. But... It just feels a little bit more boring and depressing whenever they've only got one path to go on like this. But anyway, we'll go and do a time trial level, Speedhenge. On one star, of course, because I actually want to, you know, actually stand a chance of succeeding while I'm commentating. There are a lot of different types of towers, but i found myself, go considering I haven't actually unlocked that much, and the cheapest and apparently most effective way of defeating enemies is by planting down the cheapest sorts of towers and then just upgrading those. So the idea is that you drag your towers out from this little interface in the bottom right here and then you can tap on them to either upgrade them, sell them, or check the information on them. However, you, you should not be selling towers and there's a reason for that. They actually penalize you in your score department if you do. So if you buy, if you sell too many towers, you'll actually lose a very significant amount of points. And I'm pretty sure points are what get converted into money in this game, so... You don't want to go selling towers, but the problem is that... Sometimes levels you won't be able to survive unless you upgrade, unless you use cheaper defenses to prevent yourself from losing troopers. Thankfully in this mode, you can let troopers through all you like. It's just, you, for the life of you, you can't do something along the lines of... You need to defeat as many as you possibly can in the time limit, so you can let through the slower ones if you need to, but... It's just a bit weird, because you have to... In some stages, you have to sell towers, because you need to build the weaker towers to actually survive for any decent amount of time. So you lose points for something that really should feel like a legitimate strategy, and so you don't want to do it, so... It's, it's, just, it's just a bit weird of a design decision that you lose points. It, it just it doesn't make that much sense to me, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, the amount of points you lose is tiny, but when you're replacing a lot of towers over the course of a level, it gets a little bit ridiculous. Just did not mean to put that there. Whatever, it's got a decent range. We'll catch him on the very edge, at the very least. Put another missile launcher tower down, and I'll grab one here. So yeah, these levels go for about a few minutes, and it actually goes at a normal time frame. Like, look, it's still counting down regular seconds, even though I've got the game on fast-forward mode. So you should always have the game on fast-forward mode during these levels, with absolutely no exceptions. And this, this touch interface is, is uh, actually a pain. Just I'll just display, display the use of an item here. It basically instant kills everything. There's also a bunch of other items. I just also have to know that the tower AI is actually particularly goofy, like... That glue tower there will tend to have the... Let's put it this way, if there's a really strong unit out in front, it will constantly fire glue at that unit, even though that unit has been slowed and will be slowed for a specific amount of time. So, it's constantly firing the one that's already slow, instead of actually firing at... Like, the units that are going past it. The tower AI in this game can be a bit dumb, I'll put it that way. 
But we're almost out of time on this level. I'll just let the timer expire and then you can see how few coins you earn. I mean, the game does say that you earn more coins when you play a higher difficulty level. And that is true because it actually multiplies your score if you play on a higher difficulty. But still, it's not that much of a multiplier. Like, watch this. That is a tiny amount of coins. Again, you do get more if you play on a higher difficulty, but jeez. When you get one-tenth of the coins you need to buy the smart mine that I expended, your coin gain rate is a bit slow. I mean, considering they make you pay like eight pounds for this, which will probably equal like anywhere between 10 and 15 bucks when this comes out in America in a couple of days, it is a bit of an odd, oddly low amount of coins to give the player. Alright, so I'll actually, um, now that I think about it, I want to do this level here, Dry Run, because it's actually a really clever level, at least in my opinion. So we'll come and do this level here. Now, th there's a reason I like this level, because it displays the adaptability of some of the AI troopers. Not well, but it does display it. And then I'll go and play a full-on, like, 70-round level, because a 70-round level takes bloody ages, and... We'll be able to talk about the majority of the game there. Anytime it decides it wants to load. I need a drink, excuse me for a second. Okay then. Thankfully we can also pause the game. When you pause the game you also see the routes that every trooper that comes out of the, any particular spawn point is going to take. So... I'm going to do the relatively smart thing and goddamn touch interface. I'm going to do the relative, relatively smart thing and spread out my six towers along here like this. I really like this stage a lot because everybody just charges at you and it really does feel like a... It really does feel like a desperate struggle for survival when you've got all these guys rushing you down. And it's just, it just gets kind of ridiculously fast with all the bloody troopers that show up eventually. I mean, seriously, look at that. That's actually kind of neat. Having all these enemies on screen at once. Getting their asses handed to them. It, it, it's neat. It's, just, it's, it's, it's a neat level design and I quite like it. They tend to have really creative ways to exploit how the AI works in this game, but... Sometimes it just puts you on a straight and narrow level and you don't really get to see it, which is a little bit of a shame. Ah, oh, we're out of money, so let's just resume that. But yeah, I like this. I, I like this sort of level design a lot. And now here come the bikers, so I probably want to upgrade these as much as humanly possible. See, so really hard to actually get to that tower there, so we have to zoom in to get it. This game would be served pretty well with some bun controls, but I can't imagine them being fast enough, especially at the higher difficulties. Where there's crap coming at you every which way, and I did not even mean to put that down, God damn it. No point wasting time on... Fucking me. No point wasting time on glue towers. There is probably a really clever strategy in the form of diverting every single line into like one giant line in the middle so that nobody can get through without getting assaulted by a million machine gun towers, but... This is a, this is a gameplay video and I suck at video games and I have to keep up that illusion in order to, for this to be any fun. See, look at this. This is ridiculous. The game really does get hard after a while. I mean, Jesus Christ, look at how many got through that. You need to be really, really careful with the way you spend in some games. Again, there are levels that go on the straight and narrow, like when the game decides it wants to load the hub level again. Oh, 
Oh, just while I'm here, I might as well mention the puzzle levels. The puzzle levels make you direct troopers into specific situations, and they are quite dull, to tell you the truth, but we'll just ignore those. So there are levels that take go on the strain narrow, like this one here that makes you go into two, into two separate paths. There was the one back here that, that's only one path. So, but thankfully, there are levels that give you a lot of of room to experiment. Like, this is, uh, Bizarre Bizarre, which I haven't actually finished yet. We'll hit this one up on casual. We... Hmm. Actually, you know what? I'll take that oil tower, because that oil tower looks useful. I didn't actually mean to get rid of the missile tower there. Where's the missile tower? Anyway, we'll just take those along for now. And we might as well take along a couple of rewinds, just for the hell of it. I don't actually plan on playing this again. Just mainly because the coin grinding is really going to get up my ass. No, I'm not gay. We'll just, we'll just wait for this to load. Alright, so this is actually a free roam level, which I quite like. Uh, well, not free roam in that sense, but I mean, you can actually build around this one in order to build a basic giant loop around this bridge. I mean, I, I can't exactly remember how to do it because I am terrible at this game, but we'll give it a try anyway. And every one of these, there's th these big levels here have 70 rounds in them, which is kind of insane. And they tend to go for a fairly long time. I tend to think it's too long, because it gets really hard to maintain interest in the level that you're playing after a specific amount of time, and it's... Kind of depressing after a while. And by the way, I am stupid because this level actually tells you how to build a loop around this bridge. Based around this bridge, but I will be damned if I can remember how to do it. But yeah, this is basically how this portion of the game goes. It's... You're, just, you're putting down towers at an absolutely fantastic rate. in order to keep all these bastards from succeeding in their mission to screw up your shit, basically. You do also get that bomb up in the top left there that slowly fills up over the course of the game. That's an airstrike. And once it fills up completely, you can press it and basically skip a wave. But yeah, in my honest opinion, these levels tend to go for a fair bit too long. And could definitely do with a bit of tweaking. In order to make them a bit more palatable, let's just say. I'll put down a glue tower here and maybe a glue tower over here. Start applying upgrades. Actually, I'll pause the game so I can just. No, I don't really have enough money for upgrades. 
That sucks. Uh, I'll upgrade these guys here because they're fairly useful in that spot. Alright, so I've unlocked the airstrike. There are a few different types of enemies in this game, and it is actually kind of impressive to see how many variations they can make on the same basic concept. And the art style, it's not fantastic, but at the same time, it's not like I can really... It's not like I can really say it's terrible either. It's a fairly decent looking thing. The music, though, and the sound effects get really... God damn it, I let them all through. The music and the sound effects tend to get really, like, over the top, though, and I tend to just... I would turn them off, but for the purposes of the video, I have left them on, so, you know. You know how that all goes. Alright, let's upgrade some towers. These need to be upgraded immediately. Actually, I should probably put a tower down here and... Upgrade that, there we go. Just to give him a little bit more of a hump to jump over. Oh god, I'm about to lose. This is fantastic. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you'll get the idea. Don't go into this game expecting a cakewalk, because it really isn't. This isn't like Plants vs. Zombies difficulty. This does actually... Fire the nuke. This does actually re require you to be somewhat clever with your positioning of your towers and your abilities, but it can it can be almost unfairly difficult at times because I mean I'm playing on casual. It's kind of hard to figure out what exactly the game wants you to do in order to actually survive in some of its levels, and it gets kind of frustrating. Like, see, all those guys there, and the tower AI doesn't really spread out the difficult... Doesn't really spread out, like, the targeting amongst amongst them, which is kind of annoying. They always focus at the one at the head of the pack. But yeah, you fail, you don't get any stars. You need stars to actually unlock some towers, but when you're getting so few coins and I have to buy the rest of my towers, it doesn't really bloody matter. Tap dancing nearly destroyed the barracks. Don't even know how you can pull that off. Actually, I'm getting a game called Tap Dancing Hero later on today, but... Whatever, so... This was a look at Field Runners 2. It's not bad, but it's fairly difficult, and the coin earn ratio is a bit silly, and it doesn't really take advantage of the fact that it has some really clever AI and concepts in the form of the free running levels. But, nevertheless, it's still half decent, and, you know, if you can get a front of 10 bucks, it's alright, but, you know, come in expecting to know that to get the best towers, you're going to have to grind. There's no shortcut, there's no way to do it except getting everything on hard, and this game definitely isn't a cakewalk, so... Come in expecting a challenge, and you should be fine, and it's not that bad of a tower defense game. I like Plans vs. Zombies better, but, you know, this definitely has some... This definitely has some redeeming merit to it. I just hope it doesn't cost that much. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.